Hi there! Some time ago I put together a low frequency oscillator that I was using for some experimentation at the time. In this video I'm going to use that oscillator to demonstrate resonance in a circuit. So let's go check out the oscillator and get right into the demo. This is the low frequency oscillator that I'm going to be using for this resonance demonstration. Now this closely resembles a vacuum tube Tesla coil and if you want to see exactly how a vacuum tube Tesla coil works there's lots of schematics online and everything like that but this video is more about resonance and I really don't want to get into this particular device too incredibly much. But really what this is is this is just a precise oscillator is really all it is. Now Tesla's original Tesla coils used rotary spark gaps and they were far from precise. Uh, they were really RF fire hoses. So uh, a lot of harmonic energy being sprayed about because of the rotary spark gap and such. This is a vacuum tube doing the oscillation instead of a rotary spark gap so we get a very accurate sine wave that comes out of this. It's a nice clean sine wave. So I'm not spraying RF all over the place with this thing like a regular Tesla coil would. Now this isn't a lucky loo machine. It's not designed to you know, be throwing sparks and bolts of lightning off the top of it. When this thing is in operation it sits silent and there are no sparks coming off of it and um, it's designed to, for a purpose not to, not to throw sparks and bolts of lightning. So uh, if you're waiting for big bolts of lightning you're not going to see it but you, you will see uh, uh, you know, a resonance effect and um, you know, energy transferred from one coil to another here just quite shortly. So this has got a nice clean filtered supply in it and everything whereas you'll notice in most Tesla coils there's a 60 cycle buzz and they're really quite audible and you'll see you know, big sparks flying off of the top and of course that's what most people want to achieve. They want to see how big their sparks get and that's kind of the challenge behind a, a, you know, a, a vacuum tube Tesla coil or a rotary spark gap Tesla coil as well. Uh, I have different intentions for this and I've been using this for different kind of experimentation so I don't want that. Uh, that coronal discharge that you see coming off of the top is uh, really just wasted energy and I'll demonstrate that here quite shortly. So this particular unit is uh, very versatile for myself. I can change out the primary coil very quickly and I can also change out the secondary coil very quickly. Here's a different secondary coil right here. And uh, the primary coil just has some wires that run down to some fawn stock clips. And uh, within a minute, I can uh, change the primary and the secondary out on this thing with absolutely no issues. So I can move the frequency around on this thing quite easily. On the front of the machine, you see a bunch of switches. One's a filament switch that turns on the filaments to this. Uh, the two tubes in the back and the one in the front here pull a total of about 45 to 50 amps continuous. So I had to wind a power uh, filament transformer for this thing. Uh, the filament transformer has to be, you know, relatively accurate to the filament specs. You know, you give them a little bit too much voltage and that dramatically shortens the life of the tube. So there was quite a bit of time just involved in uh, winding that transformer. Dealing with drop and everything like that. Uh, this here is the uh, filament switch again. This is the plate switch. Now the variac, which is in the center here, is turned right down. So when I turn the plate switch on, I have an indicator light here that tells me that the high voltage could be present. When I turn this variac up, this thing creates RF enough that uh, with the camera in this kind of proximity here, I might damage my camera. So I don't want to turn this thing up, but um, that gives you an idea. Anything that's metal that's around this thing, um, you know, you'll get RF burns on by touching it when this thing is on. And this thing really isn't even high power. It's a, a relatively low power um, uh, Tesla coil, you could call it, right? So uh, even touching these switches or anything metal around this thing, when, when the Variac is turned up, you get uh, you know, RF burns on your hands. So the knob on the Variac is made out of Bakelite, so this always has to be turned down first, and then you turn the switches off. If I turn the filament switch off, it'll shut everything off, so this is kind of like a master. If I want to put this thing in standby, I can just turn the B-plus off or the plate supply and um, the thing is safe to handle. Everything on the top of this thing is uh, at a high voltage potential so obviously I'm not touching this thing. This thing is designed for experimentation so everything's open so I can get to it. There's clips here and everything. And the, um, the power supply transformer is right behind the coil here. You can't see it. It's a relatively large transformer that sits right here. And that's pretty much this coil, just uh, kind of quickly, or this oscillator uh, kind of quickly here. So next what I'll do is I'll set up everything and we'll get into the resonance demonstration. 
All right, I think we're ready to go with the demonstration. I have the camera set quite far back over here, and I also have the microphone sitting over here uh, far away from the oscillator. So I don't want to damage my camera or the microphone or anything like that, so I have to you know, keep this quite a ways away. I also have a wide angle lens on the camera and that might be a little bit deceiving so what I'm going to do is I'll just show you the distance between the coils that we're going to resonate here and the actual oscillator. So if I put my hand, the tip of my finger on the top of this coil here and I stretch out my hand, uh, this coil here is about oh, maybe 9 or 10 feet away from this coil here, something like that. So you get a rough idea. Now there really is no thought in the distance here that I've got going on. It's just what fits in the shot with a wide angle lens. I could move this quite a bit further away and get the same effect. Again, what we're doing in this video here is we're going to take a look at resonance. And when I say resonance, what I mean is I need to make these coils very electrically similar to this coil right here so that this coil will transfer some energy into these coils right here. Another way to visualize resonance is if you take a tuning fork and you ring the tuning fork so it's making an audible note, and you bring another tuning fork that isn't making any noise, it's just sitting there, and you bring it close to the one that's ringing, because these two devices are built so close to each other and they're pretty much going to make the exact same frequency when they're ringing, this one will transfer some energy into this one here, and this one will just start to ring just by bringing it close. So just by bringing this one that's not ringing very close to the one that's ringing, this is going to start to make noise as well because we have a little bit of energy transfer. And it's really the same thing with this and really what Tesla was trying to do with his big tower and everything. All right. So in order to start this demonstration, I need to turn the oscillator on and I'm just going to make it, you know, put out just a little bit of RF, nothing that's really high or anything like that. Basically, I'm just, just going to turn it on, all right? So what I'll do is I'll click the plate switch here and I'll bring the variac up to, oh, uh, you know, a very low power level here. Okay, so we don't have any reg plating there and the plate current is very low. Uh, it might be a little bit deceiving in the video or in the actual picture. It might look like the, the plate on the uh, 450TL is getting white or it's, uh, uh, you know, like it's red plating or something like that. Even in the photos, it kind of looks like that. And what that really is, is the actual filament itself reflecting on the inside of that glass ball and shining on the outside of the plate. There is no visible uh, color in the plate right now due to plate current whatsoever. This thing is really just just absolutely idling. You can see that there is absolutely no breakout on the top of the ball and it's sitting dead silent. I'll just be quiet here. A little bit of hum that you're hearing from the filament transformer. All right, no breakout whatsoever. So, you know, it's, it's not throwing bolts of lightning, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, compact fluorescent bulb right here you can see it's an old compact fluorescent bulb. All right, this one is dead. The switching power supply in it has gone away, just like they all seem to do. So uh, what I usually do is crack them open and fix the power supply, and they're good for another year or two or something like that. I haven't done that with this one yet. But uh, the bulb itself is actually in good shape, so it'll work good as an indication for what we're trying to do here. All right, to show you that this thing is actually you know, putting out some, some RF energy right now, I'll just bring this close, and you can see that uh, I'm about to, well, maybe two or three feet away from that coil standing at this uh, at this point here. All right, and you can see that it's lighting up in my hand. I'm not even touching the metal on the bottom here. I'm just holding it close like that, and it's exciting the fluorescent tube just by standing right here. No coronal breakout or anything on the top whatsoever. Now you can see in these two coils here, I have the coil separate right now, so this is not electrically equivalent to that coil whatsoever. So you see, when I bring this close, we have absolutely no light or no anything right here. Okay, no light whatsoever. You know, nothing in here is resonating really. So, uh, you know, it's, yeah, if I can bring this close to anything, and you're not, you're not going to see it light at all, right? But yet, if I bring this close to the source, you'll see, you'll see it light up here, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this electrically equivalent to that and I'm going to act as the tuning capacitor. I'll be the big human tuning capacitor and I'll explain that here in just a moment. So I'll just put the bulb down. I'm going to take this coil here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it on the top of this one like this. All right. 
Now I've got a bunch of little neon bulbs on these coils right here, and these neon bulbs here are just as tuning aids to help me tune this thing. That's really all they are. So I'm going to clip these two coils together, and when I put these two coils together, they're going to become very electrically similar to what's going on over here. So I'll just clip this on here like so, and I'm just going to put this down, and I'll move away from it, and you can see that the little neon bulbs are lighting up. Now you can see that this one here, I'm using this as a tuning aid, and really what this is is the, the impedance of that circuit is a little bit different. I have a different coil on that and everything, and that's why that little neon bulb gets so bright. That's another topic within itself. What we're going to do is we're just going to stick to the resonation part right now. So I'll bring my hand close. I'm acting as the tuning capacitor. If you watch that little neon bulb, you can see when I get to about this point right here, I'm adding just about the right amount of capacitance to make this thing tune correctly. And you'll also notice that these other bulbs will also brighten up just a little bit as I come close to it. Now, since I am the actual tuning capacitor to this coil, I am becoming RF hot. So as I'm doing this, and I'm tuning this for a maximum, if I was to say touch a metal cabinet or something in here, I would probably get an RF burn on my finger, leave a little white mark there, and it doesn't feel very good. But uh, I'm not touching anything right now, so I'm, uh, you know, I'm absolutely fine. I'm just standing in here like this. So I'll grab this compact fluorescent bulb again, and I'll walk over here towards this coil, and you can see, you know, it lights up. We have RF here. Now if I walk towards this coil over here, I can tune this with my hand, and you're going to see that I can light this fluorescent bulb up no problems on this coil here. Now there's absolutely no connection between this coil and this coil whatsoever. And I just get close to it, and I get light out of it. So now what's happening is this is transferring energy from this coil here into these two coils here because these are electrically equivalent. And what I'm doing is I'm acting as the capacity across these coils in order to tune it. This is a very high impedance circuit right now, these coils. So at any rate, so there you go. There you go. You've got the, you know, the idea of what resonation is. And this is what Tesla was planning on doing. Now you can see that this was it would really work back in his day. You got to think that this is compared to what Tesla had. This thing is peanut powered. All right. This, you know, there's nothing here. Even right now, just what, for what it actually is, it's barely on. So it's peanut powered anyway. So just think having an actual generator at your disposal, really, and having wires run into your laboratory like Tesla did with these monster Tesla coils. All right, just think of the amount of distance that you could get out of that. What is that thing, you know, what were they making? 500 kilowatts, a megawatt? How much power were those Tesla coils actually putting out? You know, this is, uh, you, know, you know, a grain of sand compared to what he was putting out. So now, you got to keep in mind, that this is, these are the early days when Tesla was doing this, and he had rotary spark gaps going inside of these Tesla coils. And of course, having these rotary spark gaps going is creating a lot of broadband energy. So really, his coils were RF fire hoses. These things are spraying RF all over the spectrum. It really wasn't focused. So if he would actually take those things, maybe that's what he was doing in the tower, he would take that energy and really focus that energy, you can get an idea of how far this would actually work, and it would actually work quite a ways. So Tesla's ideas are, are quite valid and, you know, really, you know, pretty astonishing for the time. Again, this thing here is peanut powered, very, very low powered, and this is very focused. So it's nothing like his um, you know, are a fire hose kind of, uh, of setup here. This is very focused to one frequency and it's nice clean energy. And this is the reason that I can get this kind of result with, you know, such a low power. Now, there is also no coronal breakout on this coil whatsoever, anything like that. So I'm, uh, I'm not really wasting any energy into, uh, into discharge into the room here. So that really is what resonance is. So I hope this helped uh, explain a little bit about resonation and everything. Uh, if you want to see more experimentation and uh, me to get into more things in this topic, there's a lot of things that could uh, revolve around this inductance and capacitance and reactance. And uh, I could really get quite deep into this subject here, but um, this is keeping it nice and simple for the beginning. If you enjoyed this, just let me know in the comments and, uh, and uh, we'll revisit this again and uh, maybe we'll do some more experiments with this uh, in the very near future. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on resonance. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and hang around. 
there'll be more videos surrounding that oscillator and its different uses in the very near future. So I'll see you then.